In this video, I'm going to show you how I make this small medieval house out of foam, a tabletop terrain staple for any fantasy themed RPG or miniatures game. For builds like this, I like to start off with a general blueprint. I enjoy improvising the more organic builds, but for anything architectural, I prefer to do all the guesswork up front. I begin the build with the floor of the house. I'll be using a hot wire table to do most of my cuts. If you're following along and don't have this tool, I suggest substituting the material for something that's already thin, such as foam board. After creating my floor piece, I cut a thin sheet off the top. This will turn into the hardwood floor and guarantees a perfect fit. I mark 1 centimeter intervals for each of my planks and draw on my floorboard pattern. I'm making sure to offset the smaller pieces like an actual hardwood floor. I then cut out the pieces and texture them with a hot wire cutter wand. If you want to learn more about this process, check out my wood structure video that goes more in depth. After everything is textured, I cut out the rest of the planks, making sure to keep the order that I created when drawing the pattern. I give the floor a coat of glue and place each plank down one by one. Here you can see how starting with a piece of foam cut from the original floor is the easiest way to get a perfect fit. I want to create some stonework around the bottom of the floor. I begin by cutting out some bricks, roughly 1cm by 2cm. As you can see, freshly cut foam does not look like stone. The best way to texture these bricks is by tossing them in a container full of rocks and giving them a good shake. If you want to learn more about building with bricks, Check out my previously uploaded Stone Ruins video. The bricks are glued to the side of the floor, one by one. This creates the final footprint of the house. The next step is the walls. Using the blueprint I created earlier, I cut out some thin pieces of foam. These types of cuts are tricky without the right tools. Fortunately, foam board makes a good substitute if needed. These larger timber pieces will be going into the corners of the house and are textured up in the same way as shown previously. I've really been enjoying my 3D printer as a way to supplement builds with extra details. These windows were found on Thingiverse. For this next step, I'm using a template from my original blueprint. This is going to help with window placement. One side is getting two windows, and the other larger side is only getting one window. One of the many great things about 3D printing your own bits is the amount of control you get with scaling for a perfect size that matches the build. A big reason why I prefer to build with foam is its ability to take texture. This stucco texture was created by rolling up tin foil and pressing it into the foam. I make sure to texture all the wall pieces of the build. Next up is all the wood beam detailing. These are created with thin strips of foam, textured with the hot wire tool. I prefer to use quick dry wood glue to stick these to the build, since it has a great hold and provides a few minutes of working time.
Besides detailing, these planks also provide a way to cover up the seam lines of the windows. For a few of these pieces, I leave a bit of overhang and cut to size after the glue has dried. Back to the printer. I found some 3D files that would be perfect for the doors of this home. These come from a company called Cast and Play and are part of their townsfolk collection. This house is going to have two doors, one on the larger side and one on the smaller side. Here you can see me making some door frames using thinner pieces of foam. I continue adding detailing throughout with the same methods used earlier. Eventually, I'm left with four walls of the house ready to be attached. The walls are attached to the larger timber pieces that were created in the beginning. Having these pieces in each corner gives the build a realistic look and also avoids any seam lines. Everything is held together using wood glue. With this part done, the floors in the house of the walls are completed. Time to move on to the roof. I start by cutting some 1cm thick timbers for the roof to sit on. The bigger pieces are cut slightly longer than the wall below in order to have a bit of overhang. I use my blueprint to cut out the triangular shape of the roof. This is textured to look like stucco and is glued to the larger timber piece. Next are the wooden planks that make up the majority of the roof. I'm using separate pieces to make the section look more real. I finish off the roof with a large wooden beam. It looks interesting, but it also serves the purpose of hiding any seam lines at the top. The great thing about crafting from a blueprint is that the build can be easily recreated if needed. At this point, the build is done and it's time to move on to painting. I begin by coating everything in black craft paint. This will act as a base coat and give the entire build some extra durability. I make sure to apply the paint in thin coats in order to not obscure any detail. I originally didn't plan on including any shingles, but I had a change of mind. These thin pieces of foam were all textured with a hot wire tool and are placed in a scattered way. I want the roof of the house to look old and have a lot of missing pieces. Now for some actual color. I start with the floor and paint the bricks with a few different grays. I'm using an overbrush technique to get some nice texture. More on this technique is in my stone runes video if you want to learn more. I base coat all the wood using a darker brown, and all the stucco panels with beige. I let these colors dry completely before moving on to the next step. Here's what it looks like when the wood and stucco parts are dried. Next I dry brush all the wood with a lighter brown to give it dimension. You'll notice later on in the video I eventually tone this lighter brown down with a mid-tone to fix the chalky looking texture. The roof is painted with a dark navy.
After the paint has dried, I dry brush the tips of the shingles with a mixture of navy and teal. I keep the lighter color to the tips in order to define the shadows and the highlights. I'm going back to the wood to add a mid-tone color. This will bridge the lighter and darker browns and give the overall paint job a nicer look. For this build, I wanted to try making my own weathering pigments out of soft pastels. This worked surprisingly well and was fairly straightforward. The pigment can be applied heavily and faded afterwards with a dry brush to get a good balance. Next up is adding the moss. This is created with a simple combination of PVA glue and flock. The green adds a bunch of visual interest, especially in the more neutral colored areas of the build. I try to apply this as organically as possible, making sure that there's no obvious patterns. And last but not least, my favorite part of the project, 3D printing and painting miniature furniture for the interior. The bed and desk files are from a company called Vevictus Miniatures. Everything is sized to fit my 32mm scale. And now my rogue has a place to call his own. And that wraps up this build. Let me know what your favorite part is in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more hobby content. I'll see you guys next time.